Hey everyone, here is a list of both the paint colors and brushes used for today's step-by-step -step acrylic tutorial. If you'd like to follow along with the exact materials I use, their links can be found in the description box below. Let's jump right in and get started. The first step in this painting is to give ourselves a nice base coat of burnt sienna on our canvas. I am using my large square brush, size 12, and I am diving right into my sienna color and coating my entire brush. I will use a nice thin coat over the entire surface of the canvas. This technique is called grounding, and this will allow for our colors to pop later on in the painting, and will actually make these colors easier to see. Once our base coat has dried, we are going to make a purple gradient for the sky. To start, I am mixing my base purple, which will consist of red, blue, and white together. Purple can be very tricky to mix, so don't worry if it doesn't look exactly as my purple does here. Have fun with this and make your own shade of purple. I'm going to start working from the top of the canvas down and add more white as I progress further. And this is going to lighten the purple and the effect of the sky towards the bottom of the canvas. Art is about your own self-expression and of course, having fun. Try adding red to your mixture to create a more pink lower half of your canvas, or you can keep this a very nice cool purple, whichever feel you like best. Once your background has dried, we are going to go ahead and add another layer of color. I'm going to mix a very peachy pink color to add to the bottom of my canvas. I want this sky to look as though the sun has just set and a bit of it can be seen over the mountaintop. I am mixing red, yellow, and white together with a very small amount of purple still left over in my brush bristles. It's okay if your brush isn't quite clean. With acrylic, we want to layer from back to front, so I'm painting in all of the areas in my background first before we get to the foreground. All of this section is completed in my large square brushes, size 10 to 12. I'm going to darken this shade of pink now by adding more red and a touch of yellow. This will create some variation in the sky so the bottom of my canvas is not just the same block of color. Skies have multiple colors and change as the sun sets, so have some fun and play around with different lightness and darkness in your painting. Thank you. 
At times, acrylic can be very tough to blend, especially if it has already dried. To avoid our canvas looking like two separate halves, one purple and one pink, I'm going to mix my pink and my purple shades together to create a combination color between the two. I will use this new color in the middle of my canvas to blend out these areas and create one cohesive gradient. Once our background has completely dried, we can now start to add in our foreground. I'm going to start with my Filbert brush, size 4, and mix a color combination of red, blue, and white together to create a magenta or a dark pink color. We want to make sure we use a lot more red in this color combination so that the color is a lot warmer. From there, I will start to block in the mountains in the bottom quarter of this canvas. You can have these mountains be whatever shape or size you prefer. At times, I will add in more white to my color mixture to create a nice highlight for these mountain ranges. I want to make sure I have some variation throughout so they do not look entirely the same. Light will bounce and it will play differently in our photographs and our references, and usually nothing in life is a solid, simple color, especially when it comes to nature. Add these highlights in wherever you prefer. For our next step in our painting, I want to add some fun and variation to the skyline. We have our mountains blocked in, but I want to add some bright light along the top of them to create the effect of the sun behind. I am using my small blender brush, size 6, and I'm going to mix a very soft pinky peach color. This mixture will have much more white mixed in as we want this to be our brightest highlight so far. I'm going to blend this along the mountain range, and if you find that your highlight gets a little bit too bright, a little carried away, you can use a large blender brush or whichever dry brush you have nearby, and you can buff it out into the background. For this section, I prefer the blender brushes as they can withstand a lot of force and pressure and create a very nice seamless blend. They are essentially made for this application. Because blender brushes don't have smooth edges, I'm going to take my small filbert, size 4, and clean up the edges of my skyline. I am using the same pinky peach color, and I'm just going to tidy up where I see the highlight may have been a little messy or not quite as opaque as I wanted. Before we move on to the second mountain range, I'm going to tidy up first by remixing my magenta mountain color and using my filbert brush, I'm going to tidy up the inside of the mountains. Sometimes the blender brush can cover over important areas or create a film over top of them, so it's good to go back and revisit and tidy up. At this time, I can add any additional shadows to these mountains by adding black, or red to my magenta mixture and dropping in this color wherever I see fit.
Now we are going to dive into our Mars black paint and create a silhouette of a larger mountain range. I recommend doing this section with a medium sized square or filbert brush to get really nice clean edges. Take your time to decide where you want your mountains and how large you want your mountain range to be. Once you have the entire range filled in, we can go ahead and dive into our Mars Black once more and add a bit of a dark wash to the top of this canvas. This technique is called glazing. We want to thin down our acrylic paint with water until it looks and feels like watercolor. Using my large square brush, I'm going to lightly brush this wash over the top of the canvas to darken the sky. Next, I'm going to add a bit more saturation to the middle of the sky. In comparison to the rest of the painting, I thought it needed a bit more of a punch as it was very muted at this stage. I'm going to mix together a beautiful bright coral color using red, yellow, and white together. The beautiful thing about acrylic is we can go over anything we like and cover over any areas we want to. I will have two variations of this pink, one with a little bit more white mixed in to go back and forth between in the sky with my blender brush. Remember we want variation, so by having a color that has a little bit more white, this will act as a beautiful transition highlight. Also, if you add a little bit too much paint or you go opaque in some areas, you can always buff out an area with a dry blender brush and blend it in. Once that has dried, I'm going to use the same coral pink color and add a thin stroke using my filbert brush or a small round brush to the top of the black silhouette mountains. This will indicate that the light is bouncing off the tops of the mountains and peeking through from behind. Next, I'm going to add a nice mist of clouds in the sky using my large blender brush and my original purple background color. Now remember, we mixed blue, red, and white together. Because we have added a darker wash gradient to the top of our canvas, this purple color will show just slightly, enough to create this effect. We want to make sure we are very light-handed with this and water down our paint to a glaze consistency. Once that has dried, we are going to go ahead and add our stars to the background. Using a sheet of paper, I cover over the Silhouette Mountains and add watered down white paint to a toothbrush. I like to use a glove to keep my hands clean and use my finger to brush over the toothbrush. This will cause the paint to leap off of those bristles and spot the background as stars. It is an excellent way to save yourself from having to draw each star by hand. As an added bonus, I like to take my small round brush size zero and some titanium white paint and go in and add in a few brighter stars to the background. This will make sure that there is variation and that not all of the stars look identical. 
After all, when we look up in the night sky, we can definitely see some brighter areas, constellations, brighter stars, and we want the same effect for our painting. I feel as though the sky is missing something. It's missing a little bit of movement. So let's go ahead and add a shooting star. Using my liner brush, I am taking some watered down white paint and adding in a very light line across the sky. You can make this as big or as wide as you prefer and also change the position in your painting, whatever you prefer. A big thank you to our sponsors of today's video, as well as our Kofi members. Thank you for your support. Are you ready for your next acrylic painting adventure? Check out this next video for how to paint a tiger.